Egypt's top officials deny that they had visited porn sites. You know how Google Chrome makes you a home page where it shows you the thumbnails of the last visited websites or the most visited websites? Well, apparently, while doing a presentation, uh, they had the Chrome browser displayed, and on, in the background, it had a porno website as one of the thumbnails, which is actually pretty funny because it's not something that someone would notice, right? So it's, it's quite plausible that this was actually on the, the, the user's uh, computer. Officials are claiming that it's doctored. Now, there was a study about watching porn in Muslim countries, but I couldn't find out whether it was actually reliable or true. Um, and so I won't be sharing that. However, it is quite plausible and it makes sense that if you're living in a country with regressive laws where it's difficult because dating is forbidden, um, for example, in Egypt, in Morocco, in many Muslim countries, if you stay in a hotel, you have to have a marriage license if you're staying with a woman. And they, they live there, locals, right? If you're international, obviously they don't, they don't check that. But if you're a local, you need a marriage license. So the, like one workaround is to get two hotel rooms. But you know, this can be expensive for local people living there. Um, you know, the fact is that if it's difficult to, to get laid, then this is going to become an outlet that people are going to go to. Right, and this is something that's going to be used. Now the question is, if someone is a married, committed man, and they already have you know access to to sex, why would they be involving themselves in pornography, especially now religious, um, in religious uh, officials? You know the hypocrisy is really strong there, and it's uh, obviously quite embarrassing and shameful that. On one hand, you're claiming that, you know, no mixing, lower your gaze, this is haram, that's haram. And on the other hand, you know, you're visiting these dirty websites, right? Naughty, naughty websites. So the fact is that marriage is quite difficult in that culture. And so for single people, you know, it's understandable that that's what they're doing, right? Now, let's go back to, um, you know, the reasons for pornography usage. Like there's debates on the, the harms of pornography and in relationships. Uh, my thoughts on the matter is uh, pornography is a f can be a form of escapism in a relationship. You know, it can become an outlet to make you, it can become an outlet that leads you to neglect your spouse. It's an easy way out rather than trying to talk to your partner trying to resolve your issues, maybe you had a fight, maybe, you know, they need to apologize for something they did and you're angry about it, you're not talking, it becomes so much easier to just go and wank off on, uh, on some erotic images. So because of this, you know, it, it tends to contribute to relationship problems, or it can. Um, if your partner or you are using this as a form of escapism to avoid dealing with the issues, or maybe to even avoid feeling rejected because your spouse is actually not interested in you for, for whatever reason, right? Um, this becomes an easy way out, right? And uh, while couples can use porn together, you know, I'm not speaking about those cases. I'm talking about the case where it's used as escapism here. There's also the reasons of performance anxiety. Some men have erectile dysfunction. They are not able to get it up, right? And good communication is needed in this case. Right? You need to be able to tell your partner, you need to be comfortable enough to tell your partner that I'm having these problems and I need your help and support with this, right? Um, and so obviously porn becomes an easy way out because there's no one to have to, you know, perform for. It. And you know what I mean? And and so it can be a big hit to the ego for men if they can't get it up. So if you have these problems, if you have erectile dysfunction, it's probably best to visit a doctor, right? To suck up your ego, to take the hit, and to talk to your doctor because it could be that there's underlying issues that need to be dealt with. It could be that maybe you could just solve this using you know, a magic blue pill called Viagra, but maybe there's something else going on, right? That needs to be dealt with. So it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, pornography and shame. Many people grow up feeling that it's not okay to touch themselves. It's not, okay, it's not okay to masturbate or watch porn. They feel like touching themselves is immoral. 
a surprising number of women also have never had orgasms before. So the first step in learning to enjoy sex is to learn to pleasure yourself, to learn what feels good and how it feels good. Once you are able to satisfy yourself, then you will be able to tell somebody else in a relationship how to satisfy you. It's important that if, if one has a lot of shame about the body, if they feel ashamed to be naked, if they feel ashamed about touching themselves, that they try to overcome this and learn to be comfortable with the body, with touching themselves, with playing with themselves. Only by going through this process, you will be able to enjoy sex. If you're single, if you're the single guy who's watching porn, you don't have any other alternative, so to speak, think about this. You might be also using porn as escapism, as a way of not going out to talk to women or men in your, whatever the case is, right? You could use your biological drive, your urges, as a motivation to go out, talk to women, learn how to flirt, learn how to talk, learn how to mix and fit mingle and make small talk all of these things are skills that need practice you know if you grew up in a conservative family you probably never ever talked to the opposite sex before and you don't know how to do it but that's why you need to try you need to put yourself out there remember always prefer rejection over regret a moment of rejection is much better to have over a lifetime of regret you'll feel a, a, a momentary sting but you'll get over it, right? And in the end, you might end up, end up with a much better situation. So if you need help learning on how to talk to the opposite sex, there's lots of details and tutorials and guides online you can look into. There's also, you know, basic things like personal hygiene that are sometimes missed that make it difficult for people to learn to talk to others, right? And they don't realize that they need to take a bath, they need to use, uh, you know, shampoo, they need to put perfume on, they need to smell good, they need to comb their hair. Things like that are sometimes missed but are so important. But take the time to learn how to do these things. Remember, you are the result of your parents getting laid, their parents getting laid, and so on. You have good successful genes. If you, if you are alive today, that means you are the product of millions of successful pairings to get to where you are today. So take it, take it in stride. You know what? This is, you're going to be successful. Just be confident be, and, and work to make it happen. Just go with the flow. There's nothing more natural than, than the process of bonding and falling in love and mating. It's a very natural process and we, we're hardwired to know what to do, but sometimes we need a bit of practice. In conclusion, there are many arguments about the harms or benefits of pornography. When used as escapism, it's detrimental to your intimacy and your committed relationship. It can also be detrimental if you're single and it becomes an outlet and it becomes an, an excuse to not go out and try to find a real mate. It's a tool that you have to evaluate carefully, whether it's something that's going to actually help you and bring you happiness or if it's going to be something that will be detrimental to your long-term happiness. Well, that's my thoughts on the matter. If you have other thoughts on the matter, Feel free to share your comments below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.